Hi everyone, today I'll be doing my February wrap up and I got through quite a few books so I'm just going to jump right in and I'll begin with the manga and graphic novels and then move on to the regular novels. One of the books I read for the BookTube Manga Club's February read was Maid Sama. This is by um, Hiro Fujiwara. This is volume one. And our main character, this girl here, um, that's Misaki, she becomes the school president of a formerly all-boys school and I find it kind of surprising that she was elected as school president first of all since the majority of the population is still male but she's really tough she wants to turn the school into a more female friendly school um, clean up the, the boys act and, and um, their slovenly ways and everything and she's really really tough to the point of being fairly mean um, the other side to her is she's very caring um, with her family that have fallen on kind of hard times due to health reasons and things so to kind of supplement her family's income she works um, in a cafe known as a maid cafe so she literally has this uniform where she's sort of dressed up as a maid that's like the theme and um, she ends up being recognized by this particular boy who's like one of the most handsome boys at the school and he agrees to kind of keep her secret but he secretly is falling for her so you have that romance comedy um, kind of storyline um, overall it was just kind of cute enjoyable um, a bit repetitive with the way she treats the boys and kind of neat and everything uh, overall, I gave that one three stars. The next graphic novel I read was The Sculptor by Scott McCloud. And that's the cover. Um, overall, artwork has a sort of blue tone to it throughout the entire book, and it's quite a big graphic novel. Um, this is just something I stumbled across at work, and it seemed kind of interesting. It's about a sculptor artist by the name of David Smith, and as the book opens up, he's really just destitute. He's just not succeeding as an artist the way he would like to. He doesn't have the fame and and the name and, and everything, um, no one seems to find his work interesting. And um, he ends up making a deal with death to be able to sculpt anything his mind can create, but within 200 days he will be dead. And he takes this deal, which seems quite insane to me. Um, like I said, I think what bothered me was the fact is he doesn't even worry about his ability to create the work, it's just how well it's accepted by everybody else. To an artist, it's like you want to create what you imagine and for him it was all about fame he ends up meeting this this woman through the course of this 200 days and becomes totally infatuated with her just instantly so there's a case of insta love and again that bothered me um the only thing i liked about the the book itself the most is the artwork that's like i said that's what pulled me in the cover very dynamic very um intriguing but the storyline just sort of fell flat the, the girl herself has has issues um and, and, and they all seem to be more concerned about themselves. It was The ending was rather confusing, too. I, I don't even know what to quite make of the ending. It kind of comes full circle back to the beginning, but I don't know what that means. Um, I had originally kind of rated this one higher, but I've recently changed my ratings on Goodreads to two stars because I just don't really know what to make of this story. Um, yeah, I, I just didn't really get much out of it, so just two stars overall. Moving on to the physical copies of books I have, I read the second volume of Magical Girl Apocalypse by Kentaro Sato. This is a totally messed up book. It's really bizarre. It's definitely for older teens as it's rated 16 plus. Um, we have these strange magical girls that have fallen from space and they're going about killing everybody in their sight. Um, and anybody they kill sort of rises up from the dead zombie-like and proceeds to do the same thing. And we're following this group of kids um, led by Kagami. They're a few, few little band of survivors that have now kind of hauled up in a mall and are trying to, you know, stay alive. They come across this rather pervert mall cop, which I could have done without within the book. Um, it's just totally creepy. Oh, the end of the world, so I'm just going to go and rape all the women that I come across. I didn't see the point of that. But it seems like in time there's some kind of catastrophe. People just flip out in the most bizarre ways. But what we have in this particular one is this weird parasitic type magical girl that is hiding amongst the survivors. They don't know which one has it until it sort of erupts from them, and that was really an interesting twist on the story. So it is definitely horror and creepy and intriguing. I gave it four stars. Uh, then I read volume two of The Drifting Classroom. This is by Katsuo Umezu, about uh, an earthquake that strikes and suddenly an elementary school completely vanishes. All that's left is a hole in the ground. But the school is sort of transported somewhere else. This story has sort of elements of sci-fi and horror. Uh, within this particular volume, we kind of find out what has happened to the school, at least a hint of it. And um, Sho is our main character, a young boy, 
um, who was sort of looked upon as a bit of a leader amongst some of the other students around there. Um, something happens to the adults in this new place that the school has ended up in, and they are really totally going mental. I mean, they're going crazy, uh, attacking the kids. It is super scary, uh, totally messed up. Manka, and I'm curious to see what happens next. So I gave it some four stars. Uh, then I picked up uh, five centimeters per second. This is by Makato, uh, sorry, Makoto Shinkai. Uh, I think this was like was originally two volumes, and they kind of put it in a bind up. And I think it's based on an anime, which I had not seen. Um, and I can't remember the character's name. There's Tono, the boy, and the girl's name, which I know was right in the beginning. Bear with me here. Um, Akari. So Akari and Tono, they meet when they're uh, small uh, kids, and she has just come to um, the school that he is in. And they strike up a relationship, friendly relationship at first, and gets a little bit more romantic as as the story progresses. But um, it's, it's just a slow-moving, quiet-paced sort of book. And then the two characters are sort of pulled apart by distance. Um, first, her family sort of moves a little further away, and then just a little bit later, he finds out his family is going to be moving even further away, and they get together for one last meeting and try to continue that relationship through letters and things like that and cell phones and stuff, but it, it's it's just quite not the same. It's, it's sort of um, sad and touching and hopeful at the same time, and, and as the story kind of concludes, you don't quite know. There's no definitive conclusion, I'd have to say. It's sort of left to the readers, and that's about all I want to go into detail about, but I, I did like the artwork and um, the story of it. It was just really, really sweet, touching, uh, and moving, and how their their lives affect other people as well, too. So, uh, yeah, I overall gave that one four stars. Then I read the Cage of Eden series, both Volume 3 and Volume 4. Uh, in Volume 3, uh, this particular character, and again, I've just forgotten his name. I want to say Yari. I think his name is Yari. Uh, he's sort of... The whole basic story, I forget to say, is is a plane has crashed on an island, a strange island that's got um, extinct animals running around it, and it's changing people. They're, they're acting very bizarre and scary. But he ends up being in charge of one group, basically the bullies, and he moves in on Hikari's group, um, sort of the group we're kind of rooting for, you might say, the good guys, and starts bullying them around, taking their supplies and everything. And then all of a sudden... Some strange plague starts to strike them down one by one. Their eyes turn blood red. Um, and after a short while, they die. So they have to find out what this plague is and what's causing it. Uh, overall, it was intriguing, and I gave that one three stars. For the next volume, I gave this one four stars. This one, an old friend of the Kari's, turns up. He was also on the plane and ended up in a different spot on the island. And he's going to find out some strange revelations about his friend that he never will expect. Um, but, yeah, and there's also... They kind of run into some more adults that um, had survived the plane crash and everything. And again, I don't know what it is with the adults in these kinds of um, apocalyptic type stories, but they all go crazy. Just like the Drifting Classroom, you have kind of similar events with the adults in here. So really intriguing series. I like the I like, I like the artwork and everything, and and the strange creatures that they come across. These extinct uh, creatures. Ooh, not like they had a clue, but uh, yeah. Again, this one is for older teens as well. And then the last, uh, in terms of the graphic novels, I finally read Volume 9 of Why the Last Man by Brian K. Vaughan. This is Motherland. Uh, we finally find out the cause of the plague that wiped out almost the entire male population on Earth. And overall, I'd say it, it, it was a pretty good revelation. Would like something a little bit more, but it was okay. It was pretty satisfying. And um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to go into too much more detail because since it is Volume 9, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but overall I gave this one four stars. So moving on to the books. Um, I read a Doctor Who novel, The Many Hands by Dale Smith. This is a Martha story, as you can see. Um, they did a pretty good job of representing the characters and everything, but I have to say I found the story very confusing with these bizarre hands kind of roaming around with no bodies attached. And there's... I don't want to say that. I'll give away. Um... Yeah, I, I just have to say the story was confusing and bizarre overall, and I, just, I wasn't that thrilled with it. I only gave it three stars. Then I read uh, Audition by Ryo Murakami. Um, 
an adult thriller uh, about a guy who's been a widow for seven years, and his son suggests that maybe he remarry. And um, the guy's friend comes up with the idea of creating these false um, auditions because he is a documentary maker and a filmmaker, and they said, why don't you host these auditions to kind of host, you know, audition a new wife. And he's going to get more than he bargained for, you have to say, but I found it despicable to do this in the first place. I found the main character hypocritical. I went ahead and did a whole review on this. You can go ahead and check it out. I just didn't really, really enjoy it at all. And the last sentence ruined everything anyway. Um, so I gave this one two stars. Uh, I read The Thorn and the Blossom, a two-sided love story by Theodora Goss. Or Goss. Uh, it's one of these weird accordion-type books that you read the story one direction, and then you read it the other. First, you can you can start with Evelyn's story and then read Brendan's story, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter where you begin or where it ends. Um, I liked the concept of it. I thought it was clever, but overall, I wasn't that thrilled. I found Evelyn's character really bizarre. She flip out about something and then disappear. I think that happened a couple times. Um, there's like th about three different time frames within each story that makes a sudden jump and I wasn't aware that that was going to happen or that it had happened at first and I had to backtrack and say, wait a minute, what happened in between this page and that page? Suddenly I was like years later and um, that threw me for a loop. But like I said, this, the, the girl's character, um, she'd flip up about something and then just vanish and it was just a weird, weird story overall. It was kind of clever, but not that much that I would recommend it, really. Um, overall, I just gave it three stars. Um, I read The Game. This was by Monica Hughes. I found this one pretty clever. This is a world that sort of, I think, overpopulated, you might say. They started having robots doing a lot of the jobs in the world, and uh, our main character, Lise, and several of her friends from school are about to graduate from this government school, and it sort of bases uh, your studies and your grades and things like that on what future potential you have in, in the workforce, and whether it be a teacher or scientist or whatever, and and then it will place you in in work. But unfortunately, a lot of her her and her friends basically they all have ratings that say you know oh you're geared for a teacher, but that's been robotized. Robots do that job now. Um, another section you might be good at. Well, that one's overcrowded. So they end up being sent to these are like DAs, designated areas in which they'll live. They'll get credits from the government to, you know, pay for food and clothing and things, but the rest they have to scrounge for themselves. So they go to this designated area looking for housing and decide to choose one area. They'll all live together and they kind of build it up and secure it and using skills that they, they have learned kind of through school. Um, and they definitely come in handy, but it's a bizarre world. And while they're there, they start to hear rumors about something called the game. No one really wants to talk about what the game is. Um, they hear rumors later on that there's something about a treasure or a prize at the end if you win the game. And uh, eventually they are invited. And the game is really, really weird. The story took a twist that I, I didn't really see coming. But I really enjoyed it. I have to say, um, I thought it would be one of those virtual reality type things or something. Um, like, like, not quite like Ready Player One, but along those lines, but I'll, I won't go too much more detail on that, but it's it was intriguing. You didn't know, is it real, is it not real? What's the purpose of it? Uh, what is the treasure? What, what are they going to win in the end? But uh, it held my interest. Like I said, it's a really quick read, and overall I gave this one four stars. Uh, then I read Necromancing the Stone by Alicia McBride. This is the second book in the Hold Me Closer Necromancer series. Love it. It's full of humor. Don't want to go into whole detail since it is book two. Um... But our main character, uh, Doug, no, sorry, Sam, Sam LaCroix, uh, he has sort of inherited this home after the events that happened in the first book. Again, I don't want to go into a bunch of detail, but um, he inherits the home and the property and some of the staff and the other weird things that are on the property. Um, that was really bizarre, learning about some of the things on, on the land. But he's a guy that he ends up discovering that he is a necromancer. His, his background was sort of hidden from him by his mother, sorry about the glare, to sort of protect him, you might say, but events that take place in the first book sort of reveal his abilities, and now um, he has to sort of take responsibility for these and the things that he can do. Uh, I really enjoy this. I, I love the sort of a sarcastic humor that's within it. I love the main character, and 
Uh, I really became attached to a lot of the other characters within it and his friends and things like that. I'd say the first book was a little bit better than this one, but still enjoyable. And I don't know if this concludes um, the series, or if they're planning on writing any more. I mean, it definitely has an ending to it, but more could be, um, you know, continued with the character. I just don't know. Uh, but I highly recommend this if you're just in, even just to read the first two books or even the first book. It was satisfying even on its own. So overall, I gave this one four stars. Um, let's see. I don't want to end on a low note, so I will. I will do the low note now, and that would be Monsters uh, by Ilsa J. Bick. This is book three in the Ashes trilogy uh, about a world where an EMP pulse strikes and. It kills off a whole bunch of the population, changes or the minds or the, the, the people. Um, our main character, oh my god, I'm blanking on her name, Alex, uh, she had a tumor in her brain and she was out up on the mountains and kind of scattering her, her parents' ashes. They had died and she was sort of kind of making peace with the fact that she may be joining them, I think. And then this EMP pulse strikes and um, it does something to her. She knows something has changed in her head because... She had lost the ability to smell. She lost her entire sense of smell. And suddenly it becomes even stronger, her abilities to smell. And she comes across um, Tom, uh, another man that's out there, um, and then a young girl. And they end up kind of looking out for the young girl because uh, the person that she was with, her, her grandfather, ends up dying. So it's like these three main characters in the first book and sort of struggling to survive in this new world. Some of the characters um, kind of take on almost zombie-like, uh, flesh-eating kind of creatures. And others uh, just end up with bizarre abilities, and others are dead instantly. It started off such really promising in that first book. I really enjoyed book one. I think I may even gave it five stars. Then Shadows hit, and all these new characters were um, brought into the story. It got confusing, trying to keep track. I didn't care about any of them. And then it kind of continues in Monsters. Now, the author includes uh, a thing at the back explaining um, about the characters from Shadows, where they are now, where they were at the end of that book, so you kind of know going in to the beginning of this. But there's so many, I couldn't keep track of them anyway. Um, and again, like I said, I didn't care about it. It, it. Before, the focus seemed to be more on Alex and Tom and the young girl, and then it shifted to other characters that it didn't care about at all. The story just dragged on. You can see the size of it. It is a beast. Shadows was almost as big. I just wanted to throw this book across the room. I really, I was determined to find out the outcome of our three main characters, but it was a struggle to get through it. Um, this is the lowest, I think, rating I've had in a long time. I only gave this book one star. Still don't know what caused the EMP pulse in the beginning. Um, I think that would be a major thing to find out, wouldn't you? Since that caused all of this world to change like it did. Never found out. I don't know. I would not recommend the series. Um, unless you're satisfied with just finishing book one and leaving it at that. But I think you'll be... Uh, I think that would be... Uh, I can't even think of the word. Frustrating. Frustrating. You'd be frustrated when you got to the end of book one because you want to know. And then I wouldn't pick up those. So give it a miss. And finally, the last book, um, not in order that I read, but the last book I have for you today is Feed by Mira Grant. Love this. This is the first book in the News, Fest, News Flesh trilogy. And it is basically a zombie story. Um, in 2014, uh, they developed a cure for cancer and also the common cold. And these sort of viruses they used to create these cures sort of ended up blending and creating a whole other problem, a plague that would... Um, kill you and you'd rise back up from the dead. So you end up having zombies. And the world is sort of coped. It's 20 years later and there are areas you just don't go into because that's where the zombies still kind of roam. And um, there are so many tests and things you have to go before you're allowed to pass here. You have to take a blood test. Things to show that you haven't been contaminated. And then they're constantly getting their fingers pricked and everything before they go anyplace. Um, we have Georgia and Sean Mason, their brothers and sisters. They are kind of do like this blog, like a news blog, and they have been chosen to follow this uh, it's a governor who's running for election, and they, or was it a president? Hmm, I can't remember now. It might be a president. But anyway, he's, he's a politician running for office, and it's just an honor for them to be chosen as the news team that's going to be following him around. And I really love Georgia and she calls him George and Sean's characters, the brother-sister team. 
they end up with, they have some other people that work with them on their team and their responsibilities are all different. But I really, I really became fascinated with their story and following it around. You, you kind of, you get the narrator kind of telling you the story, but then it's also interspersed with sort of their individual blogs. Um, and it'll show like a little thing at the bottom here from love is a metaphor originally published by the sounding sea, the blog of Buffy Mason. She's, Buffy's another one of the, the team that uh, I really liked her character, too. Uh, but but I thought it was really intriguing the way they kind of tell the story. You almost feel like you're reading news reports in a way about their blog reports. Um, the book continues in deadline. The next book, I, I'm looking forward to picking that one up as soon as possible. My favorite book of the month, I say, next to maybe the game. Uh, and this one I gave five stars, too. So... I hope that wasn't too long because these wrap-ups end up being so long. Um, I blab too much. I'm just going to go say bye. Let me know if you guys have read any of these and what you thought. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.